Hi, I'm Shoshana Bean, and I am thrilled to be here today with Ali Mazi and Stephen Boyer, stars of the beautiful show Kimberly Akimbo, now playing on Broadway. We're here today to ask some fun questions of you about your characters, about the show. We even have some fan questions, things they're curious to know. The fanograms. <laughs> Is that what they're That's called? That's what they're called? Yeah. Fanagrams? I love that. Okay, I think it's important to start by just saying how beautiful the show is and how extraordinary you both are in it. Um, for me as an audience member, uh, to be able to come to the theater and not only have an enjoyable time, I laughed, but to also have the most powerfully moving experience is like lightning in a bottle for me. So thank you for uh, being a part of creating such a beautiful experience for theater goers eight times a week. Um, and I'm thrilled to be here with you today. And uh, I'm excited to start with you guys and ask uh, a, a challenging question, I think, um, for the characters that you to portray in the show. Um, on the surface, uh, somewhat unlikable, sort of despicable humans. Um, so the interesting part to me is how you found your way into that, how you found the humanity, it's so grounded and it's so realistic. So how you found the humanity in these people, how you found compassion for them. Um, and we started to have this conversation before the cameras were rolling, but um, you asked an interesting question to me, which was why do characters have to be likable? Mm -hmm. What is our fascination with like um, being acceptable or liked? So it's a, it's a loaded, lengthy question, uh, but how you found your way in, are there similarities between you and these characters, where do you differ, and uh, how do you make us still fall in love with you, even though you're kind of assholes? <laughs> you wanna start? Well, I also <laughs> love that when I've had this discussion with Steven, he's like, this is not even that big, bad no, of a character, I've played I, way worse. I, I, I play a lot of villains, okay, so I'm like, okay. I really don't care if my characters are likable or not. I sure. actually, the characters actually got a little bit more likable from off-Broadway mm -hmm. to Broadway, and I was very <laughs> resistant. I was like, no, 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 keep them, keep them just despicable. Why and is that? Because I think it's, I think it's, it's more fun for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. as, as a performer to play someone who is unlikable because the challenge is to get the audience to like them in spite of that. Wow. And because <laughs> the, your, because their want is still the same. Mm. Like they, they still want the best for their family. They still love their daughter you know uh, but they but they have things in the way that keep them from successfully you know, from from being successful at 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 being parents mm. you know and and so i feel like if they can if you can play someone unlikable but still have their humanity shine through then it's then it's like the best success i i love that my character is flawed i love that she's not dealing with her daughter's, you know, situation gracefully. I was like, I know people like her um, who I think we come up with really creative coping mechanisms in life. And I think Patty has um, really done a great job bringing all the attention on herself, being a narcissist, because um, she's coping with some very serious things. Her husband is um, has an alcohol addiction. Her daughter might not live tomorrow. And her sister's in and out of jail. Um, so if that were me, I don't know how I'm going to deal with all that. I also think Patty can have these like unattractive qualities, but I know people who are like Patty who have really redeeming qualities. Mm. Um, and I don't think one person is all unlikable. Um, that helped me get into like find my character as opposed to like judging her. Mm -hmm. Um, because she says some pretty gnarly stuff um, to her daughter, which is unfortunate. Um, but... In a musical, uh, we get a song called, uh, well, a song I sing called Father Time, and we get a very uh, amazing window where Patty can, everybody's left the room and she's by herself. I find that fascinating that, like, she takes everybody to go away for her to, like, just have to deal with, okay, my might not have my daughter tomorrow. And we see in that moment, in this moment, how much she loves her daughter, and it's heartbreaking. Um, she, at the heart of it, she doesn't want to lose her kid, you know? Um, but I, I love that our characters are flawed. I don't know if you often get that in mm. musicals. Mm -hmm. I am thrilled that this feels more like a play, more like mm -hmm. real people, mm -hmm. people I know yeah. in my life, where I don't have to feel like I have to be like on. Mm. Um, so that part of it is fun. And then I think in, with our show in particular, 
it rides the drama and the comedy so closely. So all these faults that we have are also quite funny at times, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Um, I know David Lindsay Bear who wrote, wrote the play and, and wrote our musical. It's like they're just one and the same. They live so close, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, nobody is one thing. And it's like, and so often it's like it can be, it's, it's, it's easier to show people, to show characters as one thing. It's like these are the good guys, these are the bad guys. And uh, no one thinks of themselves as the bad guy, you know? And no one is just like, this is the comic relief and this is this is the dramatic character. It's like everyone everyone is everything. Everyone contains multitudes. I also feel like you root so much for Kim, our kid, because of her home life. We don't like yeah. it's not it's not an easy home life. Yes. So I think the audience roots for her to go out and live her dreams because we're stuck. Mm -hmm. We even end the show stuck. We end the show exactly where we started. Mm -hmm. There isn't, we grow a little and then we retreat. Mm -hmm. And that's where we we see that, you know, at the end of the show. But for Kim, she gets out and the audience is amped. Yeah. You know? We provide you the conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is the gift of beautiful writing. As you said, you get, you aren't just one thing as these characters and you get to ride the line as well as it's in very good hands clearly with both of you and the, <laughs> I started to get misty thinking about the father time moment because it was so Thank extraordinary so beautifully so beautifully performed Thanks. and interpreted um, okay thank you for answering that one uh, <laughs> how did you guys uh, or truly <laughs> how did you guys um, create your relationship together on stage did it you know is it one of those things where the closer you got off stage, the easier it was to play on stage, or vice versa. Um, I don't know. What do you? Yeah, how did we do in? that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> we, we don't spend a lot of time out of work no, together. No. Uh -uh. Look, we're both parents. We're both married. So I think like having sort of maybe that life experience, right. and we mm. just kind of like just kind of live in that a little we bit. We talk about our kids a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we backstage. definitely do that. <laughs> yes. And uh, I don't want to say this on camera, but I definitely called you a name one day as a joke. Did? Yes, and you said, oh, my God, that's what my wife calls me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I it's a bit that. of a curse word, so I won't say Yeah, no. yeah, don't worry about it. So that cool. was a little weird. That's fine. <laughs> also, what's really weird right now is my character is super pregnant, and so is his real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Life right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I go home, it's the same. It's exactly the same. <laughs> I love it. Well, you guys have a beautiful relationship on stage, so. Thanks. It translates. Whatever's not happening off stage is definitely <laughs> happening on stage. Um, okay, the, <laughs> the very important question for people who have not seen the show, um, what would be your, your not your pitch, but like what would be the reason that you're like, this is a show you can't miss. Mm -hmm. I already gave my review as to what made it so special for me. Like if you could do a one line pitch of like why you want to be in a seat in that theater and experience this moment in time. I mean, all I know is is when people leave the show, they said it hits them here. It hits them in the heart. Yeah. They walk away feeling many things. Um, I don't know if I can put that into words, but I do know people walk away being like, I don't mm -hmm. know why I needed that, but it hit me here, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling all the feels right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. I laughed and cried uh, on these like crazy spectrums, yeah. and it felt good, and yeah. it makes me think and all the things. Right. I, I always say this is the kind of show that I would want to go see because it does everything. It does all the right things. It's like, I want to go see something that I, I become immediately invested in the characters, that it has, that it's gonna, you know, send me into fits of laughter, and then I want it to like, stab me in the heart and twist the knife mm -hmm. and, and just like, devastate me at the same time. And that's what the show does. I mean, people, people are laughing and laughing and laughing and then, they're just stunned and tears. And it changes on a dime too. Yeah. David Lindsay's writing like like you'll be in the midst of like feeling for a character and then he hits you with a really funny yeah. line and you've got tears and you're like laughing. It's, it's really <laughs> it's really masterful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you can feel that up there because we that's sometimes you can hear it. Yeah, I was wondering if you could hear audible <laughs> sobbing, especially yes. the night I was there. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, that was you. That was you. Then, oh, but, that's Shoshana's. Uh, yes, yes. You <laughs> briefly touched on um, some of the shifts in in your characters from off Broadway to Broadway. What other changes were there? Was it mostly script? Was there music? Like, what were, what is, is the difference? Also, like the, the difference in intimacy. Off Broadway is a very intimate experience. Yeah. What other changes do you feel like happened? 
in between the two productions? Um, I feel like we were kind of able to keep the intimacy because we were fortunate enough to move into the booth, which mm -hmm. is like, it, I mean, it feels like the audience is right in your lap. Um, but it was not a lot of changes. Mm. David Lindsay Bear calls them little surgical changes, you know, because it's like a line here, a line there, but those little, you know, he would change maybe one or two lines in a scene, but it would reverberate mm. mm -hmm. across uh, a character's entire arc and change how, they, how their relationship was with another character on stage or something. Right. Um, so actually looking at the page, not a whole lot of changes, but Emotionally, especially, I think, for the parents, we had the most, uh, our characters are the most different between off and on Broadway. Yeah, they really wanted to accentuate um, the love we have for our daughter. Mm. That um, is shown, I think, a little bit more now than off Broadway. That was really important. And we got a new act, One Closer. Right. That changed from off Broadway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More ice skating. Yeah, oh, thank God. Skating. Thank God. Give <laughs> yeah, the people what they want. Because we're amazing oh. ice skaters, yeah, by the so way. Yeah, so they were like, <laughs> if you, you really got it, use it. Oh. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> That's why I was hired. Uh, yeah. For your They saw my amazing skills. routine <laughs> at the 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> why was I weirdly, like, wildly uncomfortable when you got on skates? In because we look was, uncomfortable. No, because she's pre <laughs> like, pregnant. Like, I'm so bought oh, into yeah, yeah. you being pregnant that I'm like, this is a very bad idea. I know. Yeah, I, know. I was I was all the way. Patty's like, it's, what? It's, 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 it's so <laughs> funny, though. I mean, seeing, <laughs> like, a nine-month pregnant woman on, on ice skates is very funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> there was so much lovely '90s nostalgia too. Like it, it was, Yay. it was good for my heart. If there are any '90s babies or lovers out there, it's there's a lot of good nostalgia. Um, some fan questions. Great. I know I have to. Um, uh, many people see the show as a symbol of hope for the hopeless. Mm -hmm. What gives you to hope? My child. And yeah. Yeah. Kids. I think like I get to now help raise um, the next generation. You know, and um, it's daunting, but it's also not to be dramatic an honor. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I, I say the same thing. I say I say it's an I say it is an honor to be a parent uh -huh. to my child because it's it it feels uh, I mean, it's the biggest responsibility in my life, but also it, it is the thing that gives me the most hope and seeing. I, I do get a lot of hope seeing, um, I feel like I, I used to be more of an active activist than I am now, especially now that I'm a parent, mm. but it gives me a lot of hope seeing like how Gen Z has stepped into the fray and like they're carrying the banner for everyone. That gives me hope too. I love that. Beautiful. A couple other fan questions. How does it feel to be with a small cast versus a large cast? I don't know. They both are like fun in their own ways. Uh, what do you think? I don't even know. I don't know. I'm I'm used to small casts mm. because, you know, it's my first big Broadway musical. So is it really? Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yes. You feel you. like it's you're, you know the old hat for you. You feel very comfortable. Well, like I mean, right where you should. I be. also feel like he knows the group. most musical theater songs backstage. Oh. This one. It's true. Are you the biggest nerd? Who's the biggest nerd? Uh, well, I'm musical not the theater biggest wise? nerd, but I, I just musical theater. You nerd sing the most musical theater I, backstage. That's because I just can't stop talking. That's, that's why. True. That's what it is. <laughs> Are you the guy that if you hear like a word, you're like, yes. I bet it wasn't my fault. I was given those yes. things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, you know large casts. Yeah. So I what, know. what do you feel like the major difference is between like less people backstage and more? more well, here's the deal. I mean, it. we're in such a small house backstage that like. We couldn't expand anymore, and sure. we would be like overcrowded. <laughs> I mean, like, like an ensemble dressing room can be like good times, <laughs> you know. Um, just that, like, that spot everybody can go to on a Saturday night after the show and mm -hmm. just like let loose. So we mm -hmm. don't have a central area like that where we're at. Um, but this is so like I think what's unique to our cast is we have like three generations. Mm. Um, so like you know we have Vicky, and then we have like us and Bonnie, and then we have like the kids sure. who are like nineteen. Sure. Um, <laughs> So I can't say, like, we're all into the same. Like, you were talking about, like, the 90s a second ago. And I was like, if I have references to the 90s, he's the only one that's going to, like, get right. it. Right. <laughs> I know. Sometimes I'll say things just so Steve hears it because the kids, I know, the kids are just like, who? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. Luckily, I mean, it's a nice group. 
It is. It so is a nice I guess group. Big Point's a nice group. Uh, so there's less chance of um, with the bigger cast to have like multiple people with egos. Like, sure, sure. Maybe yeah. we have one. You know, like I don't know. Like, like somebody backstage is just scheming. <laughs> you know, there's none of that. Does it feel more intimate? Do you feel like you can cultivate closer relationships versus like, oh hey, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, right? Like, um, yeah. I don't know. I think no matter in a large cast or small cast, you find your people. Sure. You know, and that mm -hmm. becomes like who you might hang out with the most uh, uh, backstage and um, outside of life. Um, so I don't know, Shoshana. I I have been part of big cast, but I also feel like you kind of go to your dressing room and you get ready yeah. for your show, and yeah. then you go home or you do fun stuff like this. And um, yeah. I mean, I guess like we're. I'm probably more in tune with people's lives because there's less people. Sure. You know, I don't feel like that. I go to the theater and be like, I just feel like I haven't gotten this person to know this person as well. But like, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's just a few of us. Yeah, we we know everybody pretty yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Again, I just want to reiterate what a beautiful show it is and encourage people to come see it. Uh, it is exactly what you said. It is uh, a ride of hilarity. It is moving. Yeah, it's definitely thought provoking. It definitely makes you reconsider where you're putting your focus and how you're spending your time in your life. And it reminds you how important the relationships with the people that you love are. It is a beautiful show and you guys are telling the story so impeccably. It was an honor to be there and it's an honor to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.